was told to give you a special tour of the Plains Indian Museum today. Instead of using Teasdale, you are the one that is chosen today. So today I'm going to introduce to you a good friend of mine. This is Hunter Oldell. She's the assistant curator of the Plains Indian Museum. And how's it going, Hunter? It's going really good, thank you. All right. Well, why might not Teasdale be the one to give a tour here today? So for some tribes in the United States and Canada, um, owls have certain sensitivities when it comes to times of mourning. Um, and so out of respect for those tribes, we have asked that um, Tees or uh, uh, Hayden come and see us today. All right. Well, Teasdale said he was sorry he couldn't make it, but he's very uh, appreciative of, of you giving us a, 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 excuse me, can't talk, uh, a quick tour of the Plains Indian Museum here. And Hayden will be sure to share it with everyone else at the museum. Great. Well. So tell us a little bit about what goes on in the Plains Indian Museum. Yeah, so the Plains Indian Museum opened in 1979, um, but it was first fundraised in 1976. And okay. a group of people came together in the center of the West and said to tell the authentic story of the American West, you need a Native American museum from a Native American perspective. And as that, this brainchild was born. Um, and so the Plains Indian Museum was quite progressive of the time. Um, what we're thinking about in the 60s and 70s was a lot of um, rights and, and political rights and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a, a point of that, we ended up with Plains Indian Museum. And so we have about 10,000 collections um, ranging from all over the United States. However, because we are Plains Indian Museum, we only exhibit the tribes that are in this, um, the plains. And so the way that we define the plains is central Canada down to the Rio Grande. Okay. And so at any given time, we try to exhibit um, the objects of those tribes, and that's about 128 culture groups. And so those that were um, here prior to colonialism, and then those that were forcibly moved into the plains after colonialism. Okay, well, quite a bit of, uh, of information and, Very much. And, and items to convey to the public here. Yeah. Um, so um, I know you were gonna talk a little bit about migration, you might do that a little later on. This guy is a migratory species. As a Swainson's hawk, they actually will go all the way down to the pampas of Argentina in the winter time, and they're gonna eat lots of grasshoppers there, and then they come all the way back in the, the springtime and the summer to uh, lay their eggs, and, and they'll eat some mice and, and lots of rodents up here as well. And they cover quite a bit. Of well, we appreciate there. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what else do you wanna share with us here today? Uh, I think that's it for Okay, we'll head on over this way. So as a point of the Plains Indian Museum, um, we end up representing quite a lot of tribes that were migratory tribes. And so those are the tribes that follow migratory species, um, may that be buffalo, elk, pronghorn, so on and so forth. And so we wanted to show you an example of one of the structures that is pretty predominant in Plains Indian culture, and that is the teepee. And so the teepee is um, made of lodgepole pine, um, that's typically the desired Pole because it lives in both um, cool and hot climates, high climates, and so it looks way better. And the teepee structure itself was originally made of either buffalo or elk hide. Um, and it's kind of a perfect structure, and so when you think about it, um, when you're out in the plains, very similar to where our good friend um, lives, um, there's a lot of weather that happens. And so, if say it's raining or snowing, the structure encloses on itself, and it's kind of the perfect structure take away different weather. And so for many different tribes, um, they have belief systems in the way in which their poles are arranged. Mm -hmm. And so for the Crow people, that's what I am. The hawk is one of our protectors as well. All right, excellent. And I know he doesn't have to live in a shelter, but he has some, uh, to help him out with some of the excess moisture, you know, if it's raining, he's sitting up on a nice high perch somewhere. He does have oils that coat his feathers that protect him, and it helps to shed the water a little bit better. Looks like a, a hodge cover. And it would, and um, I would imagine he probably has multiple layers that also keeps him. Um, so within the TV itself, there's actually an additional um, piece of canvas or hide, and it acts as a second layer for those who are um, living at the, the bottom area. But it also keeps, um, when the TV is lit, it keeps any kind of silhouette from coming out as well. So wow, very cool. Layers. I did not know that. Very cool. What do you have to share with us over this way? Of course. And so, as we were saying, um, migration is a really important part of Plains Indian culture. And so we wanted to show Hayden an example of what a migration scene would look like. All right. 
And so his species has been here for tens of thousands of years. Um, for many different tribal people, they've also lived on the plains. And so something that we um, see a lot is the way in which when the horse was introduced onto the plains, uh, the way I equate that is the industrial revolution of um, tribal cultures. And so the horse, traditionally what people would have to do walking or carrying, they can now do on the backs of horses. And so the lodge, what we had just seen, those got bigger. Um, people were able to travel the plains a lot quicker. And it was also an area in which um, migration was an important part. And so, of course, you have these people who are living a symbiotic relationship with nature, but they're also trying to interpret the natural world in that way. Um, and so you see design work. So you want to show Hayden sure. ways in which the designs are. And so many of these represent um, very personal experiences in the natural, natural world. And they're also made of natural materials. And so we see different examples of hides, um, different plant fibers, um, feathers, even animal feathers, and, and that important relationship that animals have to plains cultures. Um, more often than not, we have a higher value in nature than we did in ourselves. And so think about it this way. Hayden is layered in multiple um, feathers and multiple downs. He has every evolutionary trait that is going to help him survive. When we are born, we're born in the nude, and we need clothing, and we need um, different forms to, to cover our body, and so we're inferior beings. And a lot of tribal stories um, relate around animals either giving up their lives or teaching us ways um, during the natural world, and so it's, it's quite beautiful to see that. Very neat. Very neat. Was there anything else that you wanted to share with us today? I would just love to, you know, there's, yeah, there's so much here. There, there's so much to see, and um, and you know, looking at ways in which animals are represented in these different pieces, and then also looking at how feathers are, are an important part. And so, if you look at the woman's dress, the triangular design can sometimes be interpreted as feathers. Of oh some wow! Sort. I hadn't noticed that before. Yep. And then we have on the cradle, which she's carrying. There's mountain designs that you also see. And so natural world is a really important part of um, Plains culture, and that is often how it's interpreted. Very neat. Well, Hayden really appreciates the special tour here today, and thank you so much for your time. Um, and I know you have work to do. You can head off this way. We're going to go wander off and look at some of the other things. Okay. Um, and I know there was some really cool thing over here, Hayden, that this was uh, there's a shield over here and lots of really cool designs up here.